Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I hope that um, I put to rest the idea that uh, Joseph married an Egyptian woman. So did quite a bit of studying on that. So let's get back to Judah's Scepter and Joseph's Birthright by author J.H. Allen. This will be chapter 7, titled Ephraim, Samaria, Israel's Idolatry. And just to let you know a little secret, God hates idolatry. You know, the Lord created all things and he doesn't want people to give glory to the creation rather than the creator. So, all righty. Now, remember, uh, Samaria was the capital of northern Israel, whereas Jerusalem was the capital of Judah which included Levi and Benjamin. So let's get reading this book. You know, and I want to make a uh, suggestion. You could never truly understand the Bible without a, a good working knowledge of Genesis. I remember when the Lord brought me back to him, I mean, I used to believe in uh, when I was in junior high school, middle school, or whatever they call it now. Uh, I think it was, what, eighth grade? Yeah, eighth grade. I used to believe. And, um, you know, got to high school and walked away. Uh, various reasons. But uh, when I came back to the Lord, and he had to almost kill me to get my attention. Um, first thing I did was when I got a King James Bible, I went to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, there you go. And uh, I was reading through it, and uh, there were... Devils sent my path pretending to be friends, pretending to be believers, and they were always trying to talk me out of uh, believing the Old Testament and reading it and studying it. Oh, that's for the you-know-whos. That's not for us. Don't read that. You know, just read the New Testament. Yeah, I don't think so. Nope. Nope. The entire book belongs to his children. It is their book. So, with that in mind, let's read chapter 7. Oh, and by the way, this is June 3rd, 2022. If the calendar is right, today is the Sabbath day. So... Okay, let's get reading. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood. And that's in Hosea chapter 7 and verse 1. Uh, remember, Bob's note here, Samaria was the capital of northern Israel. Jerusalem was the capital of Judah. I know the modern so-called church world likes to make them to be the same, but they're not. They had different capitals, different land areas, different people. I mean, they were all Israel, but not all of Israel was Judah or Levi. They had different kings and they even fought wars against each other. So how can they be the same? They're not. 
they're just showing you, well, you know what? You can't go to Bible college for four or six years. And in any reputable Bible college, to get a bachelor's degree, you should have to have read the Bible cover to cover at least once, at least once. So to say that these preachers with bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degrees or doctors of divinity, which is like a, a, a 10 years of college, eight to 10 years of college, Bible college, to say that they're ignorant of this information is a lie. I mean, they're not ignorant. They can't be. They have to be deceivers. It's just no other way around it. Unless, of course, the Lord is blinding them. And the Lord does blind people. Trust me, he does. So, when you fail to give him glory and he'll blind you so all right let's keep reading yeah there, there's no way these bible people can have co these bible college degrees and not know the difference between israel and judah it's just impossible i mean they have to be deceivers there's just no other way so all right let's keep reading here are the names of Israel, Ephraim, and Samaria are used interchangeably for the one kingdom. It bears the name Ephraim because it is the birthright kingdom, that of Samaria because it was the name of their capital city, and the name of Israel for the reason that when dying Jacob, whose name had been changed to Israel in bestowing the birthright upon Joseph's two sons, said, Let my name be named on them. When the blessing of him that dwelt in the bush came upon Joseph, and uh, Bob's note here, uh, it's talking about when uh, Moses uh, fled Egypt and saw the burning bush, and the Lord spoke to him out of the burning bush. Well, that's what they're talking about. When the blessing of him that dwelt in the bush came upon Joseph, he who was separated from his brethren, it is declared that his glory was the 10,000 of Ephraim and the thousands of Manasseh. Thus he received, in so far as tribal honor or glory is concerned, a double portion. So at the time of the division of the land by lot, under the leadership of Joshua, Bob's note here, there's an entire book called Joshua. It's the sixth book in the Bible. Joshua took over when um, Moses died. Moses got to see the promised land, but he didn't get to go in because he had um, disobeyed the Lord. So, yeah. And Joshua is, you know, what uh, I believe the correct way to pronounce what the uh, you know who's are trying to say is Yeshua. I think it's Joshua, but I don't know. One day we'll find out. But you know what? When you lie, uh, I, I believe nothing they tell me. So, and every messianic so-called you know who that I've ever tested, I have found they've lied to me. That's why I don't trust them. Uh, there was a number of years ago I was trying to fellowship with them, but I just know too much about their ways and practices. And every time I tested one of them, they did. They lied to me. I mean, I, I know the Bible too well. And uh, I know their little hidden secret thingies that uh, Jesus condemned calling it the uh, tradition of the elders. Yeah, I know there are little secret writings better than they do for a lot of them. So, yeah. All right, let's keep reading. Um, 
So at the time of the division of the land by lot under the leadership of Joshua, we find the declaration that there was also a lot for the tribe of Manasseh, for he was the firstborn of Joseph, but that they gave no part unto the Levites in the land, save cities to dwell in. Now, Bob's note here. There were 12 tribes. Judah was to be the tribe of the kings. Levi was set aside of the Lord for service for the Lord. They were to be the, uh, the tabernacle and temple. When Well, the tabernacle came first, but then the temple later. They were basically the uh, Sadducees in uh, the time of Christ. And they're, they're, the Levites took all their information from the book of Leviticus, L-E-V-I, Le Leviticus. That was the book for the Levites that explained how to do the tabernacle worship, how to build the tabernacle, how to do animal sacrifice, uh, the ritual washings and what have you. I mean, it's very, very detailed. Um, the book of Leviticus, very, very detailed. But they were not given a portion in the land. So being there was 12 tribes, allotted land minus Levi, because they were there. That's what the tithe was for. The tithe was for the 11 tribes to give to the Levites so that they would have uh, food and sacrifices for the Lord. And that's what the tithe was for. So when you got people telling you the tithe in the New Testament, you know, tithing in the New Testament, uh, and it's for the church. Well, tell them to prove the pastor is a, Lev uh, a Levite from the tribe of Israel. When he can prove his lineage and you want to tithe, go ahead. But if he can't prove he's a Levite priest, uh, he's got no business trying to tell people to give him tithes. It's a fraud. Now, if you want to give gifts and offerings, that's another thing altogether. But when you start talking about tithe, tithes were for the 11 tribes to support the 12th tribe, which was the tribe of Levi. They were not given a portion of the land. The Lord himself was their portion. So, Joseph, Manasseh, and Ephraim, his children, were given a double portion. They were, that's where the, they were, those were the 12 tribes that were given allotments of land. The Levites were given uh, places to live in the cities. And then people would go to the city and uh, say, I got a dispute about my neighbor. And you'd go to the priest and they would settle the dispute. Sometimes they were taking bribes, which the Bible calls gifts. But um, that was to be their job. They were to, supposed to do this in the fear of God. And then uh, they decided, well, we want a king. And that was in the book of Samuel. We don't want God to be our king. We want a, an earthly king. And I did a Bible study on that too. Now, I imagine that really hurt God's feelings. You know, think about it. So, yeah, that's how that worked. All right, so, uh, yeah, so Joseph, Joseph's children, he had two children, and they were given a double, a double portion. So you had 12 allotments of the land, and the Levites were given uh, places in the cities. You know, places to live, but they weren't given any land. They couldn't, they didn't have a place to, to do any gardening or farming. So, like I say, that's what the tithe was for. It was for the support of the Levitical priesthood, the Levites. 
How can you go to Bible college for four, six, eight, ten years and not know this stuff? How can you not know? I mean, you know, I'm not, I am not a Bible scholar by any stretch of the imagination. You know, I've just listened to the Bible on uh, audio a few times and read it, you know, and I've read it at least once. But, uh, it's disgusting. It really is. So, um, let's see. So at the time of the division of the land by lot under the leadership of Joshua, we find the declaration that there was also a lot for the tribe of Manasseh, for he was the first born of Joseph, but that they gave no part unto the Levites in the land save cities to dwell in. And the reason given for it is, for the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. And that is in Joshua 14.4. The fact is that Jacob adopted the two sons of Joseph, gave them tribal headship, and thus made 13 tribes in Jacob, also known as Israel. But since Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were the tribal heads of the kingdom of Judah, there were still ten tribes, for the birthright kingdom and the Lord's promise to the king of Israel stood fast. The history of the kingdom of Israel, as opposed to that of the Jews, is full of the sin of Jeroboam and of her kings who walked in the sin. The sin was, in a special sense, the sin of that nation. It pertained exclusively to them because it was born, bred, lived, and died among them. For no other nation took up with it, not even their brethren of the kingdom of Judah. It was the standing sin of the nation to them. It ever stood as an open door through which other forms of idolatry might enter and through which they did enter. For although it is said of Amri, the sixth king of Israel... Okay, Bob's note, as opposed to Judah, Amri, bad egg. For although it is said of Amri, the sixth king of Israel, that he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord in following the sin of Jeroboam, and also that he did worse than all that were before him. The Lord is compelled to say that of Ahab, the son of Amri, that he did worse than his father. For it was he who introduced the worship of Baal, among the Israelites. Uh, by the way, uh, the word Baal, B-A-A-L, uh, is just a generic term that means Lord, but they were calling Lucifer Lord, or the devil, or Satan, or, you know, these fallen angels. You know, they were practicing Satanism, calling him Lord. And there was actually... Um, they were taking a title for the God of heaven and earth, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and applying it to Satanism. And it got so bad that the Lord says, don't call me that anymore. Don't call me Baal anymore. Don't do it. Seriously. So, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. So Ahab, the son of Amri, that he did worse than his father, for it was he who introduced the worship of Baal among the Israelites. Following the introduce of Baalism, or Baalism, other idolatries were quickly introduced among them, and soon the cup of Israel's iniquity was full to the brim. The result of which was that she was cast out of the land. Uh, Bob's note here. The Assyrian Empire came and took northern Israel um, into slavery. You know, well, they killed the army, but uh, whatever was left over was taken into slavery. And um, The Assyrians 
were uh, really nasty people. And from what I understand, they used to take fish hooks and put it through their lips and then parade these slaves through their cities saying, look what we caught. And if memory serves me correctly, their god was Dagon, which uh, Dagon was the uh, a fish from the waist down and a man from the waist up. You know, Disney's Little Mermaid. Yeah, that was their that was their god. Well, not a female, but a man. The fish god, Dagon. And you can read about Dagon in the Bible. Um, but what they did was the Assyrians, uh, they would take you and move you to another place and then take the people from somewhere else and move them into your old place. That's sort of like they would take the people from Florida and move them to New York and the people from New York move them to Florida. And the reason they would do that is so that you didn't know where you were it's, and basically nullify your home field advantage. I mean, if you were to do uh, guerrilla tactics, guerrilla warfare, and no, we're not talking about an ape that pounds its chest. No. Uh, gorillas, you know, you work the fields by day and then fight at night. Uh, I mean, you'd know the landscape and the area, but if you were moved to a new area, you would lose that advantage. And that's why they did it. And the thing is too, uh, when you're conquered, you're going to learn the conqueror's language. You're going to learn it. They're not going to want you to speak your old language because they don't, they don't want you uh, conspiring against them in a language they don't understand. So they're going to make you speak in the new language and they're going to make you learn it. And from what I understand, if they spoke Hebrew under Assyrian occupation, um, I heard some people were killed. That was how serious was. They, they didn't want you talking to everybody and saying, hey, uh, you know, in a language that the Syrians couldn't understand, hey, uh, let's go fight these guys and do guerrilla warfare, you know. No. Uh, that's why Israel lost uh, the ability to speak Hebrew when they went into captivity. The northern kingdoms, they never came, they never went back to the land for the most part. And the Assyrians only left a few people in the, uh, in the land. Uh, the majority of them were taken into captivity. And if you uh, study history, the Babylonians rose up and became a major power and they had conquered the Assyrians, their neighbors. And when the Assyrian army collapsed, you know, because instead of having soldiers guarding the Israelite slaves, you know, they took them and took them to the front line to go fight the Babylonians where they were defeated badly. I mean, the Babylonians just crushed the Assyrians. So when the uh, Israelites were in the Assyrian territories and they realized the army had been defeated and they heard the Babylonians are coming, they decided, well, uh, maybe we should get out of here. So they went north towards Europe. Yeah, they went north and they, they settled Europe and they lost they lost their identity. They lost their language. But, and this was common knowledge years ago, but hardly anybody knows that anymore. So, you know, something just something to keep in mind. All right.
Quit rambling on, Bob. Let's read the book. I don't want to hear your ramblings on. And oh, by the way, I'm sorry I haven't been answering it by emails. I've been kind of, I've been kind of down the last couple of weeks, you know, being sick. Uh, uh, it's been a mess. I've just, I've been kind of depressed, really. It's uh. Yep, not much to look forward to in this world, I'm telling you. All right, let's keep reading the book. Israel was not only cast out of that land, their God-given heritage and and which, if God be true, must yet be, become their everlasting home, but she was cast off by the Lord and divorced from him because of her harlotry. What's a harlot? A whore. Because of her harlotry and forsaking him, her lawful husband, for the worship of idols. And if you want to read, Bob's note here, if you want to read about God's divorce of Israel, turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, and verse 8. God divorced Israel, but not Judah. All right. Before giving the details of the casting out and the casting off, we deem it advisable to give a complete list of Israel's dynasties together with a list of all the kings who reigned over Israel from the time when the kingdom was, was taken from Solomon and given to Jeroboam, his servant, until they were finally driven out of the land, and also to give what the scripture saith concerning idolatry of each of these her kings. So we place in parallel columns below the name and number of the king, the number of the dynasty, and the length of time which each of the kings reigned in one column, and what is said concerning his idolatry in the other. Dynasty number one. This is when uh, Israel um, split off from uh, Solomon's son. We covered that in a previous study. But uh, Solomon's son was, was asked... Uh, this is Bob's note, by the way. Solomon's son was asked to uh, lower the taxes. And instead of saying, okay, yeah, I understand. He, uh, he says, well, I'm going to, Bob's paraphrase, I'm going to raise your taxes. You know, my dad taxed you a little. I'm going to tax you a lot. And then Israel said, uh-uh, no, you ain't. We're out of here. And then they split off and made their own king and made their own places of worship. And uh, yeah, it didn't work out too good. So, all right. So the first king of Israel, dynasty one. And Jeroboam said in his heart, now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, the king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Uh, really? A, a, a calf, a golden calf brought me out of Israel, uh, Egypt? Yeah, I don't think so. And he set the one up in Beth Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship. And that's in 1 Kings 12, 26 through 30. Jeroboam reigned for 22 years. And King Nadab is next. He reigned for two years. Uh, and that you can read about this in First Kings fifteen twenty six, King Nadab, and he did evil, evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in his sin, wherewith he made Israel to sin. Dynasty two. Third King Basha reigned twenty four years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of Jeroboam and in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin. 
1 Kings 15.34 Fourth King, Elah, reigned two years. For all the sins of Baasha, Jeroboamism, and the sins of Elah, his son, by which they sinned and by which they made Israel to sin, etc., etc. 1 Kings 16.13 Third Dynasty and it came to pass when Zimri saw that the city was taken, that he went into the palace of the king's house and burnt the king's house over him with fire and died for his sins, which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord in walking in the way of Jeroboam and in his sin, which he did to make Israel to sin. Uh, Zimri reigned one week, 1 Kings 16, 18 and 19. Dynasty 4. But Omri wrought evil in the sight of the Lord and did worse than all that were before him. Boy, that's pretty bad, huh? And did worse than all that were before him, for he walked in all the ways of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in his sin, wherewith he made Israel to sin, to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. 1 Kings 16, 25 through 26. He was the sixth king, and he reigned for... 12 years. Who was the seventh king? That was Ahab. He reigned for 22 years. Oh boy. And Ahab, remember Ahab had a wife called Jezebel. Yeah. You can read about Jezebel the prophetess, the false prophetess, who seduced the Lord's servants in the book of Revelation. Yeah. Jezebel. Her name had the name of the false god of Satanism, Baal. Jeze, Jezebel. They call her Jezebel. Uh, Baal or B-E-L. Uh, it's just different spellings, but it's you get the idea. Same thing. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Uh, right now I'm listening to my head. Uh, George Thorogood and the Destroyers, bad to the bone. You know, the Terminator movie when the Terminator walked into the uh, biker's bar. Yeah, bad to the bone. That was Ahab. And Ahab, the son of Amri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal. And another guy that's got a E-T-H-B-A-A-L. He's got the name Baal in his name. The daughter of Ephbal, king of the Zidonians. The Zidonians, uh, Bob's note here, they were um, associated with the Canaanite tribes. So, yeah. The daughter of, of Ephbal, the king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove... And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel than all the kings of Israel that were before him. 1 Kings 16, 30 through 33. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the Eighth king, Ahaziah, and he reigned two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. For he served Baal and worshipped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel according to all that his father had done. First Kings 22, 52 and 53. Ninth king was Jehoram. Reigned for 12 years. Um, and he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father and like his mother. For he put away the image of Baal that his father had made, 
Nevertheless, he cleaved unto the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. 2 Kings 3, 2 and 3. Fifth dynasty. Uh, tenth king Jehu reigned 23 years. Howbeit, from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, Jehu departed not from after them, to wit, the golden calves that were in Bethel and that were in Dan. 2 Kings 10, 29. Eleventh king Jehorahaz reigned 17 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Boy, that's getting to be a common theme here, isn't it? And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord and followed in, uh, followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. 2 Kings 13 and verse 2. 12 King, Joash, reigned for 10 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, but he walked therein. 2 Kings 13 and verse 11. Thirteenth king, Jeroboam, the second son of Joash, reigned for 41 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. Second Kings 14, 24. Boy, I'll tell you what, what a common theme, huh? Fourteenth king, Zechariah reigned six months oh boy and he did that which was evil in the sight of his of the lord as his father had done and departed not from the sins of jeroboam the son of nebat who made israel to sin second kings 15 and verse 9. uh sixth dynasty 15th king shalom reigned one month the sins of shalom are not recorded oh boy he must have been really bad Lord says that one month, that's long enough. You're gone. Zip. Well, that's the Bob paraphrase. So seventh dynasty, 16th King Menahem reigned 10 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not all of his days from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. Second Kings 15 and 18. 17th king, Pekahiah, Pekahiah, reigned two years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. 2 Kings 15, 24. Seventh dynasty, 18th king, Pekah reigned 20 years and he did that which was evil in the sight of the lord he departed not from the sins of jeroboam the son of nebat who made israel to sin second kings 15 28 19th king hoshea reigned 22 years and he did that which was evil in the sight of the lord but not as the kings of israel that were before him so he was bad, but he wasn't as bad. 2 Kings 17, 2. After the introduction of Baalism and other idolatries, there were a few feeble attempts at reformation, but they were only partial, as we may readily see. Take, for instance, the case of Jehoram, who, which was referred in the last chapter, how it is written that he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord, but... Not like his father and mother, for he put away the image of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he cleaved unto the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. It was this slight and hypocritical attempt to purify the worship of the people, which so displeased the Lord, and which made Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A, the prophet, give that scathing, scathing rebuke to Jehoram in the presence of his kinsmen kings. For if he knew enough concerning the Lord God of his race to have his conscience troubled over Baal, he had sufficient light to have made a clean sweep of the whole thing, but he did not do it. 
And the sequel proves that he did not succeed in destroying Baalism from among his people, for they were soon back at it, and even went so far as to act sac they even went so far as to offer their own sons and daughters in living sacrifice to the idol of Baal. They burned uh, in Moloch worship. Uh, this is Bob's note. In Moloch worship, they took their sons and daughters and burned them alive. A burnt sacrifice to the devil. Boy. And you wonder why the Lord did some of the things he did. Yeah. All right, let's keep reading. It was to this kingdom, the people of which are Israelites and not Jews, Israelites and not Jews, that the Lord sent Elijah the prophet to make the fire test as to whether he or Baal be God. Um, if you're interested in this, uh, you could uh, take a look at my Elijah the prophet video. I did an entire Bible study on the life of Elijah. Uh, Elijah made a challenge to the prophets of Baal and Elijah basically said, let fire come down from the sky and uh, burn up the sacrifice to whoever be the true God, basically. I'm paraphrasing. And the prophets of Baal tried to get their God to do that, but it didn't work. And then Elijah's uh, sacrifice was fire came down from the sky and burned up the sacrifice. And all the people are saying, uh, even God is God or something along those lines. But there was no revival. You know, they acknowledged him for because they saw the miracle, but they didn't acknowledge, they, they didn't cleanse their hearts and worship the Lord like they should have and put away all the evil. They didn't do it. I guess they're like modern day people and one of their sins. So whatever. So there was a fire test. It was to this kingdom the people of which are Israelites and not Jews, that the Lord sent Elijah the prophet to make the fire test as to whether he or Baal be God. And when the Lord answered by fire, which not only consumed the sacrifice, but the stones of the altar, the water in the ditch, and the very dust under the altar, it was there, these people who shouted long, loud and long, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. But they never forsook Jeroboamism and soon relapsed into the worship of Baal worse than ever. Finally, the Lord raised up Jehu, who destroyed all the house of Ahab and became the king of Israel. He, upon his ascension, gathered the people together and said unto them, Now this, he's, tri he's doing a trickery. Bob's note here. He's doing trickery here. Jehu. Jehu killed Ahab and the entire royal family. I mean all of them. So he gathered the people together and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little. Jehu shall serve him much. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all the prophets, all his priests. Let none be wanting. You know, let's gather all the prophets and priests of Baal. I want every single one of them here. For I have a great sacrifice to do for Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting or lacking, you know, if anybody stays home, he shall not live. So if they didn't show up to perform their duties for Jehu, they were commanded to be put to death, to be killed. But Jehu did it in subtlety to the intent that he might destroy the worshipers of Baal. 2 Kings 10 and verse 19. This ruse worked like a charm. They all came, prophets, priests, and all the worshipers, so that there was not a man left that came not. And the house of Baal 
was full from one end to the other. Then he commanded his guards to destroy them, saying that the man who let one escape should pay the penalty with his own life. So his soldiers were, Bob's note here, uh, Jehu's soldiers surrounded the house of Baal. And they said, go in and kill everybody. If anybody escapes, whoever let them escape, you're going to die in their place. That's a pretty good um, reason to not let anybody go. So, yeah. Let's keep reading. They did their work and did it well. So the record reads, Thus Jehu did destroy Baal out of Israel. But, oh note the very next words, Howbeit from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, Jehu departed not from them, to wit, the golden calves that were in Bethel and that were in Dan. 2 Kings 10, 29. See, if Jehu had gotten rid of the golden calves, he'd have been a lot more perfect in the sight of the Lord um, than he was. So, all right, let's keep reading. It was in this, uh, it was in regard to Israel that the same ten tribe kingdom that the Lord through the prophet Hosea said, Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer, and of whom he said, I will heal their backslidings, I will love them freely, and whom he exhorted, saying, O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God. But they would not. And yet, at that same time, the Lord declared, that the Jews did have power with him, and that they were among the faithful saints. In the face of all these facts, can there be any further question as to the real meaning of the expression, Ephraim is joined to his idols, Jeroboam's calves, or need we be surprised in the fact that these cold hard facts that the Lord should say, let him alone? No, surely no. The only surprise is that we should have been so stupid as to have tried to spiritualize Ephraim and his idols. Since it is a well-known fact that the Jews also went into the worship of Baal, and for this they were eventually carried away to Babylon, we deem it advisable that all may the more readily grasp other facts with which we shall yet deal to give at this juncture a tabulated list of Judah's kings. Judah's kings, okay? Bob's note here. Judah's kings, not Israel's kings. They're not the same. You can't go to Bible college for four, six, eight years and not know there's a difference. All right, let's keep reading. A tabulated list of Judah's kings from the time God broke up the United Kingdom for you will remember that he said, this is of me, until the uh, Jews went into the Babylonian captivity. Kingdom of Judah, dynasty, a continuation of David's house. First king, Rehoboam, reigned 17 years. Next, Abijah, 3 years. Asa, 41 years. Jehoshaphat, 25 years. He was the fourth king, by the way. And Jehoshaphat was a good king. Fifth, Jehoram, eight years. Ahaziah, one year. Uh, then they had a queen, Athaliah, six years. Jehoash, 40 years. Amaziah, 29 years. Azariah or Uzziah, 52 years. Jotham, 16 years. Ahaz, 16 years. Hezekiah 29, Manasseh 55, Amon 2, Josiah 31 years. Josiah, that was a good king. Josiah was a great king. I want to meet him one day. I hope to meet him one day. I want to shake his hand. He, uh, he got rid of, he got rid of the, uh, so... Dom ites out of the land. He got rid of them. Yeah. There was no uh, pride uh, parades when he was king. 
He got rid of Satanism. He cleaned house. I mean, he cleaned house. But Judah had been in so much evil that the Lord says, well, I won't bring destruction upon Josiah's days, but afterwards they're toast. Seventeenth was Jehoahaz, three months. Eighteenth was Jehoiakim, eleven years. And then you had nineteenth was Jehoiachin, three months. And then twentieth was Zedekiah for eleven years. In this list, we perceive that the same dynasty which commenced with when David was made king over the United Tribes continues throughout this entire list down to and including Zedekiah. While in the previously given list of Israel's kings, you notice there are no less than eight dynasties. The reason is obvious. Judah's kings are the God-given royal line, along with which the swaying scepter passed from father to son. For the Lord had promised this family that neither the scepter nor a lawgiver should depart from them until Shiloh should come. And I believe Shiloh re, re, uh, pertains to Christ. And I believe Shiloh uh, has reference to when they say Shalom, peace. You know, Christ is called the Prince of Peace. Uh, for the Lord had promised his family that neither the scepter nor a lawgiver should depart from them until Shiloh should come. But such was not the case in the kingdom of Israel. Hence, feudalism, feudalism prevailed among them. All right, that is the end of the chapter for Judah's scepter and Joseph's birthright by J.H. Allen. Um, I hope you found this interesting as I have. Um, it's been probably, it's been probably 30 years since I've read this book. Uh, this was one of the books I read back in the early nineties. Yeah. Yep. So I guess for almost around half my life, I've been a believer now, you know, so, and Unfortunately, I didn't give God glory for the a lot of years there. So, luckily, well, not luckily. Uh, the Lord is the Lord of second and third chances. You know, you get on your hands and knees and repent and seek him. You'll find him. He'll find you. So, sometimes he might have to do some hard things to you to get you to listen like he did me. I was a hard-headed. Uh, I was <laughs> I was pretty hard-headed. He had to do a lot to get me to listen. Let me tell you what. But uh, it's the way it goes. And I... Uh, Destroyed a lot of good things that he gave me by not, uh, by trying to do things my way. My dad's favorite entertainer, singer, was Frank Sin Atra, you know, Sinatra. And he sang, I did it my way. Well, I tried that and it didn't work out very good. Matter of fact, everything I did was a disaster. So, yeah, I need to listen to his way, not Frank Sinatra, but the Lord. So, hope you enjoy this chapter. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.